Uh, so we're in section 4.5. We're going to spend several days on graphing. So we're moving away from looking at sines and cosines as ratios in, in triangles and moving towards a little bit the, the idea of sine and cosines as functions. So let me grab a couple of pictures and we'll talk about the graphs and how we're going to how we're going to change these change these graphs. So here's my sine function. Down a little bit. And then I'm going to put a co graph of a cosine function next to it there. All right, so uh, a couple of things, a couple of things about these graphs, about these functions that we already know. The period. What is the period of the sine of sine and cosine? What was it? Two pi. When we thought about the unit circle, we we saw that they repeat every two pi units. So our period for these is two pi. So if we look at our graphs. The sine function goes through zero here and is going up, uphill, it's increasing. And then it does that again right here at two pi. So this would be one cycle, one period of the sine function. Same thing with cosine, cosine function, cosine of zero is zero, and it completes one cycle. It's up here at one and heading downhill, decreasing here at 2 pi. We have 2 pi units. What about our range? Our y values between what and what? Negative 1 and 1. So here we are at negative 1 and then we're up here at y equals positive 1. Here we are at positive 1 we're down here at y equals negative 1. So our range is between negative 1 and 1. We can also see that we have key points, what we call key points. Key points at whenever we are at a maximum, when, when we're at the maximum of the function, and where it crosses the x-axis, down here, and same thing here where it crosses the x-axis, a maximum and a minimum, top or the bottom. Every pi over 2 units, there's pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. So we have key points, every pi over 2 units, and pi over 2 is 1 quarter of the period. And for any sine or cosine function, no matter what we do to it, stretch it, compress it, translate it, move it around, it's going to have those, the graphs of those functions are going to have key points every quarter of a period. Because that's, that's the way our sine and cosine function work. We, when we think about our unit circle, we get the maximums and, and minimums at the quadrant angles. So we get a, pi, pi, we get a, a key point every quarter of a period. Um, how about the sine function, even or odd? Did we say this one was even or odd? So here is f of pi over 2 is 1. f of negative pi over 2 is negative 1. Does that make it even or odd? Odd. Sine function is odd. And it's symmetric about the origin. So we have origin. <coughs> origin symmetry. 
And so the cosine, cosine function, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Cosine of negative pi over 2 is also 0. F of theta equals ne f of negative theta. That makes it even. And what kind of symmetry does this one have? Y-axis. So cosine function is even, sine function is odd. Now what we're going to do today with these functions is we're going to do stretches and compressions and talk about how we figure out those stretches and compressions. Yeah, this is just a f of x equals sine x okay. and f of x equals cosine x. So that's if nothing's done to them. No, yeah, nothing's done to them, so this is true when nothing's done to them. Okay. So this is an unshifted, un no, we're not doing anything to it. So let's start doing some things to our functions. First thing we're going to talk about is the amplitude. So we're talking about functions that look like y equals a sine x or y equals a cosine x. When we multiply a uh, multiply a function by some number, what does that do to the graph of the function? So if we had, for example, if we had y equals 2x squared versus y equals x squared, what does that do to the function? It, it, we get a stretch, right? So we get a vertical stretch. Or we could get a compression if we had y equals one half x squared, for example. So this is going to give a vertical stretch or compression. We call this A, this factor out here, for, for when we're talking about trig functions. We're going to take the absolute value of that and call that the amplitude. Because if we had a negative sign out here, what would that do to the function? If we had a y equals negative 2x. Stretch it and it flips it over the x-axis. So a negative is, is going to, not going to change our stretch or compression, but we get a reflection. We call the absolute value of A the amplitude. And our amplitude is going to be the maximum distance from our axis. If we're not moving the function around, that's the x-axis, but if we move the function around, the axis shifts with the function. So let's let's sketch a graph. Let's talk about how we sketch a graph when we're when we're uh, changing the changing the amplitude. So we want to sketch y equals 2 sine x. So our amplitude is 2. So we're going to get a vertical stretch of 2 units. So to sketch this, and when we sketch these uh, on a quiz or a test, when the, when the book asks you to sketch them, it doesn't mean uh, do this and then copy what it looks like in your calculator. We need to plot points and come up with a with an accurate an accurate sketch. Um, so we're going to say our period. We're not changing the period, so the period is two pi. We haven't done anything to the period. We get our key points. every pi over two units. So I'm going to, we get a stretch of two, so I know instead of going up and down one, I'm going to go up and down two units. So two is going to be our maximum distance from the axis. Our key points every pi over two units, so I'm going to go um, pi over two, pi, 
3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And we have a sine function, so we know sine of 0 is 0, and we know the sine increases up here to 1 normally, but we're multiplying by 2, goes back down to 0, down to negative 2, and up here. When we're working on sketching trig functions, this is when um, knowing the unit circle really kind of it, it, people really get the get the trig the, the unit circle memorized because we have to know the sines and cosines of all of these all these angles to get a good sketch. And we could continue we can continue in the negative x direction. We always, don't always have to just go in the positive direction. So I could do negative pi over 2, negative pi, etc. And we would continue the same way. Here, here. And my graph would look like this. So this is a little, little more than a period that we sketched here. So this would be a, 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 a decent sketch of this function, where your points are labeled, your axes are labeled, doesn't have to be beautiful and perfect, but you have to have your points labeled so you know we know what we're talking about. And if we put a sketch of in blue, I'll put y equals sine x. So everything's the same except the sine normal sine function, un, unstretched, is just going to go up one unit and down one unit. So it's just a little smaller but the period is the same. And if we had, I'll do it in green, y equals one half sine x, then it would just go, our maximum and minimum would be one half. And that sketch would look like. So, but everything's the same. The period is two pi units. We get key points every quarter quarter of a period or pi over two units and we could continue negative in the negative direction here and we could continue for more uh, more um, oscillations in a positive x direction if we needed to as well. Usually I'll get I'll ask you to sketch on a quiz or a test I ask you to sketch uh, two periods. All right questions there. We would do some, we would do similar Similar thing for a cosine function. The only difference for, with the cosine function is the cosine of zero is one. So our cosine function starts up here on the x-axis and then and then decreases to zero rather than starting at zero and increasing to one. All right. So that's how we deal with the uh, period change. Okay. Or sorry, the amplitude change. Next, let's talk about how what we do when the period changes. So we're going to talk about period. So now we're talking about functions y equals a sine bx or y equals a cosine bx. A is still just our amplitude. The absolute value of A is our amplitude. That tells us our, how far up or down from our axis we're going maximum. So that doesn't change. But when we multiply our variable by a function, so we're, we're multiplying by something inside the function, what does that do to the graph of our, our function? You remember from transformations of, of functions? So we get a stretch or a compression horizontally. So the B gives us a horizontal stretch or compression. So this B this factor B is going to change our period. If we stretch it, our period's going to get longer. If we compress, 
our period is going to get shorter. Well, let's figure out how we, how we tell, how, how does this change the period? So we're going to look at y equals a sine bx. To figure out the period, we're going to say, well, this equals 0 when bx equals 0, this, this thing that I'm then finding the sine of, because sine of 0 is 0. So that tells me that x equals 0. If bx equals 0, then x has to be equal to and then our sine function when equals zero when bx equals so we're saying this angle whatever this bx thing is equals two pi because we're starting at zero and we want to go up down and back up to zero so that equals two pi well this tells me that x equals 2 pi over b. So this is going to complete one cycle between 0 and 2 pi over b. So that tells us our period, if it completes one cycle in that many units, our period is 2 pi over b. So that's how this factor of b changes our period. To find our new period, we take 2 pi, which is our normal period, and we divide it by this thing. And that's going to give us our horizontal stretch or compression. Are we good with how we came up with this this, this is our period. Just looking for when this function completes one cycle, one period. All right, so let's talk about how we use this to sketch a graph. So we're going to look at y equals, we'll just keep the amplitude one, cosine 2x. So our amplitude equals one. Our period is 2 pi over 2 equals pi units. And we get key points <coughs> every quarter period. So every pi over 4 units. So now we're ready to sketch. So my period is pi, and I'm going to go by pi over 4 units. So I'm going to go pi over 4. 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2. 3 pi over 4. And then 4 pi over 4 is pi. And that's going to give me a period. And I could also continue out here negative pi, negative pi over 2. I could continue this way as well, 4 pi over 4, then we get 5 pi over 4, then we get 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2. That's the other thing that's going to happen as we work on sketching these. We'll get very comfortable with working with these fractions, hopefully. All right, now we're ready to sketch. Our amplitude is 1, so we're just going to go 1 to negative 1. And the cosine of 0 is 1, so we're going to start here. And then the cosine is going to go through 0, down to negative 1, up through 0, up to 1 again, down to 0, and down to negative 1. So here's a sketch of my cosine graph. And I could go this way as well, a little bit. So there's two periods of that graph. From here to here, that gives me 1, and from here to here, that gives me 2. And I could keep going if I wanted to. So there would be my sketch of my graph. And if we superimpose, if we put a y equals cosine x on top of it, 
Our cosine x is going to start here, but it goes through 0 there and goes to negative 1 at pi and 0 at 3 pi over 2. So our normal cosine function, un unshifted, would be that one. So we get a compression by a factor of two. <coughs> the red the red graph is compressed by a factor of two. Yes. So and any any um, any sine or cosine function is always going to have key points every quarter of a period. Because our unit circle, we get uh, a maximum or a zero at a quarter of the way around the circle. So every quarter of a quarter of a, the way around the circle, we get a maximum or a zero for any 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 sine or cosine function, no matter what the period is. Okay. All right. Let's look at one more with just a little a little twist here. Are we good with this graph? Um, next one, just a little different. So let's have y equals 3 sine 3 pi x. So our amplitude is going to be 3. So our maximum from the x-axis is going to be 3. And our period, 2 pi over 3 pi equals two-thirds. So what this is telling us, we don't have to have a pi in our period. This is just telling us that our period is two-thirds radians, which is fine. And we get key points. Every two pi over three, sorry, not two pi, two-thirds, divided by four, Units, two, two thirds divided by four is one sixth. Two twelfths or one sixth units. So every sixth of a unit, we're gonna have a key point. Now we're ready to do our sketch. That's all we need to do, do a nice sketch. So we know we're gonna go up and down three units. And we go every every one sixth of a unit. So I go one sixth, two sixth is one third, three sixth is one half, four sixth is two thirds, and we do five sixths, and then six sixth is one. And then we can go back this way a little bit also. Also, sine of zero is zero. So we start here, and I'm going to go up. My sine function increases first. So every quarter period, I get my key points. So there's my function, and then we get this going down here to here. So that would be a sketch, that would be a decent sketch of this, this function. So we've got our axes labeled, we've got our maximum, our key points labeled on our graph. So we're not just, um, we're not just drawing this and saying, oh, this is a sine function, it looks like this. Not, not a good graph. All right, questions there? Okay. Um, if you are, some of your, some of the homework asks you to check, to, to, graph in your calculator, that kind of thing. If you're graphing these functions in your calculator, you need to be in radian mode. Otherwise, you'll get just a horizontal line. So to graph sines and cosines in your calculator, you need to be in radian mode. Um, homework. So the, the book puts all the different kinds of graph uh, sketching together, so I had to pick and choose the problem, so that's why it's just a long list of uh, numbers. It looks looks like more than it really is.
and not all of these are sketch a graph. There you go.